Now that we know how the Tech Scout operates and the best practices that you need to bring in order to be successful and make the most out of the Tech Scout process, right? Because you don't have to have a Tech Scout. The thing about a Tech Scout is it puts you in the best possible position to be successful. So what is some of the essential gear that I like to bring on Tech Scouts in order to ensure that I'm putting my best foot forward? Number one, far and away, it's not for everybody, but it's the workflow that I like to implement, and that is an iPad Pro. iPad Pro with a little pin. The iPad is basically built for the Tech Scout process, uh, really easy to send and receive documents uh, from the first AD, from producers, as things change, you get instant access to those things. It looks beautiful on there. A really easy way to read those documents and to keep the schedule with you, to keep the storyboards with you. Whatever it is the production is passed on, you have it instantly at your fingertips. A lot less messy than some notebook and 15 pages of storyboards and location information. Whatever it might be, you have all of that right there on the iPad, loaded up every single question that you could be asked or every question that you have should be written down, ready to go so you can bring it up at the exact right time. You're not forgetting anything. You've got all that information right there in front of you now. To be successful with the iPad, I have a few different apps that I really like to use. Number one, far and away the most important is Procreate. And somebody on the podcast turned me on to the Procreate workflow, uh, especially for tech scouts. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically a, it's a drawing tool or it's an artist tool that you use on the iPad. You can paint, you can do lots of different things with it, but it's great for tech scouts because you can import photos that you take with your iPad camera. And then instantaneously you can be drawing on the photo. You can say, okay, this is where I want the light. Uh, the closer you can get to the actual frame that you're gonna be shooting, the, the more information that you can pass on to your keys, your gaffer, your grip, this is where we're gonna be, this is where the talent's going to be. You can draw them in, you can draw where you want the light to be coming from on big night exteriors or big day exteriors. If you want things in the background, you just pepper them in on your pen, you immediately show somebody, and we know, I mean, a picture's worth a thousand words, and with the iPad Pro and with Procreate combined, it really creates an experience that makes uh, communication extremely effective on set. So Procreate is a definite must. It has made the workflow uh, exponentially better uh, all by itself, Procreate. The next big app that I use is Google Earth. Now, this serves a bunch of different purposes. If you're looking for spots in a location that might be different, if you're outside in a big exterior, you can quickly explore the landscape. Uh, I've used it before to judge heights of condors that we might need, cranes that we might need. If we need to see over a tree, there's ways inside of Google Earth that you can measure the height of the camera so you can see what you see over, you can see what you see down the laneway. If you're gonna do a drone shot, you can get on Google Earth and just do the shot yourself and you can uh, really pinpoint the location of where you're going to be working. The other thing I like to do is I'll take a snapshot of Google Earth, of the location before we get there, and I'll start to draw on the lights or draw on the positioning of the lights. That way when the key grip and the gaffer ask me, okay, what are we thinking here? I just already have a top-down bird's eye view of the location, whether it's exterior, whether it's interior of the house or something like that, just around a unit or around a fixture. That way you can really get very specific. And then it allows the gaffer or the key grip on the text gaff to go, well, you know, that, that's nice in theory, but this and this and this is, is gonna make that really hard or it would be easier if we did this. But it, as long as you have that initial solution, it shows that you care about the process, it, show that, it shows that you're invested and that you can come up with solutions. And then it's up to the keys to go, okay, well, let's make this work or how's this gonna work? Or maybe we can make it better than what you just laid out there, right? But you have to know the solution again before it gets presented or else you're gonna be on the back foot and that's not what we want. So Google Earth is great for getting those top-down images, for setting the plan. Uh, Procreate is perfect for drawing on the stills. Now, I use Artemis as the viewfinder. There's lots of different viewfinder applications. I personally have found Artemis to be the best. So I will go through with the director, we'll frame up something if you're shooting in some weird format, if you're shooting anamorphic or something like that. Uh, and you know, a regular stills camera just isn't gonna get you the exact framing that you need. Remember, the more specific you can be, the better the results are going to be from the tech scout, the more fruitful it's going to be to go through this whole process. So be as exact as you can. And with Artemis, you can set the frame lines. You take that still, I'll then bring it into Procreate, be able to show everybody on the iPad, right? If you don't get the little tiny one. Uh, sometimes people use their phones, but it's like, uh, just remember at times you're gonna have maybe 10 people gathered around you looking for advice, looking for guidance. And if you're showing them a little phone, it can just get a little bit cramped, a little bit crowded. So I like to get, I got the big iPad Pro. It just makes for a really easy viewing experience and an easy collaborative experience because the more people that can see, the more people that can ask questions, uh, the sooner those things get answered, 
uh, the better off the production is going to be. So I would say Artemis as the viewfinder uh, for all of the aspects, everything like that. And then it'll actually save your location as well. So you can get really, really detailed with Artemis. Uh, following on from Artemis, the last app that is my go-to, especially with exterior stuff, but even so for interior stuff, knowing schedules, because a lot of the tech scout is comprised of you, the director, the first AD, and the information that you gather from your keys on setting the schedule. Uh, Sunseeker is a huge um, advantage now that we have right on your phone. You can dial in the exact path of the sun. Sunseeker is great, but sometimes it is a little bit buggy, but just a general idea, right? The path of the sun, where you need to be at what time. It's easy to show the director. The path is right there on the screen. Uh, it is just an absolute must to have for tech scouts. Doesn't matter where it is, inside, outside, uh, knowing where the sun is going to be, when the sun is going to be up, when the sun is going to be down. It's just such a huge advantage to have all of that right there at your fingertips. So uh, Procreate, Google Earth, Artemis, and Sunseeker. Those are my essentials all within the iPad. And again, it's nice with the iPad Pro because you just have that pen there that is so easy to manipulate things and the cleaner that you can present things. Not only can you do it on the actual job itself, but you can go afterwards. If you're going to send something out to your keys or if you're going to send something to the director or the first aid, whoever it is, you can do that all right there on the iPad. Just makes the workflow so much more efficient. The other items that I like to bring on every single tech scout is a nice stills camera. Uh, I use the Leica SL2. It's the the camera that I've uh, picked up recently, I really love it. The full frame matches perfectly with the, the Mini LF. It doesn't match up perfectly, but you get in the world of matching up perfectly. And I recommend having a nice stills camera because a lot of the times the director or the production, they're going to have to go back to the client, to the agency with stills of the location of what they want to do to sell it. And if you're doing some challenging thing or if you're really changing things up in the tech scout and you've had this plan, well, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? The better you can make that look, the easier the sell is going to be, right? It's the same as when we were talking about our websites, when we we're talking about uh, social media, putting that best foot forward to make it as easy as possible for you to get on a job. Well, now it's about making it as easy as possible to get your ideas on the job. And the, the more polished you can make those look, the higher the chance it's actually going to come off, right? If you show some uh, terrible iPhone stills with poor dynamic range or poor framing or whatever it is, uh, you're not doing yourselves any favors. So always bring, I like to bring a nice stills camera with me just so I can, then I can also look at the manipulation of the photos later on and say, what can I really get out of this spot? What would really make it nice is if I can look at the dynamic range inside of a spot, look at what I need to be aware of and say, well, well, I could change this or I could do this. It just makes it easier if you do have those nice high quality stills. So not only are you making it easier for the director and the production company to sell something on, uh, but you're also making it easier for yourself to know your range, to know uh, what you need to get from a job or from a spot in terms of lighting and framing. And the final one that is getting a little bit, you know, it's coming out of the bag less and less, but still plays a huge role, especially on bigger jobs where you're going to have a big, huge setup or you're working with night stuff or uh, any larger sets is going to be a light meter. And the light meter is great for measuring up against uh, things that you're going to have to compete with. If you're doing night exteriors, you need to know maybe you can't get a shop to close down or you can't get the shop to turn off their sign, well then now you need to measure up what you can't control. Just like the sun, you can't control it outside so you have to know what the sun is in order to fight it. Uh, you know, if you're doing big night exterior work and you can't turn off a sign, you need to know what level that sign is so you don't get there and just completely undermine your lighting or underpower your lighting. Uh, having that, that tool there and knowing just how much range, if you wanna hold a window and you're in an interior, well you can quickly very easily spot meter, incident meter inside, spot the window and say, okay, I know that the window is at this level. We're going to be here at this time of day. That's going to be coming through the window. So now I know how much I need to get inside to get the mood, right? It's about understanding those ratios, uh, but you can't do that unless you have an exact tool and the light meter provides that. It doesn't take up much space. It's really easy to use. Once you get in the rhythm, which you should, if you're a commercial cinematographer or just a cinematographer in general, uh, and you want to be a professional, you should definitely understand the key tools and a light meter is that, right? Get used to using it, understand how to use the information that you get from it, like who should know that information, uh, what channel does that information filter down, uh, and just how can you make your work better by understanding those ratios before you start. And a light meter is absolutely key. So you've got your iPad, you've got the apps, you've got your nice stills camera and your light meter, and you are ready to go on the tech scout.